Hi guys, it's Nico in this video automation gym. Today we're going to be looking at how to convert RS-485 to Modbus TCP and how to make the best use of the tools on your local network. Let's get into it. First thing, what are we going to need for the job? So in my side, I have an RS-485 to PoE. No, sorry, not the PoE version. I have the other one. RS-485 to Ethernet um, device. It's from Waveshare, it's quite cheap, and I don't know how robust it is, but that's what we're going to be using for today's tutorial. There's another option on the market, so feel free to explore it in your own time, but I assume it's going to be fairly similar to what we're doing today. So, I'm going to be connecting this into one of these. It is an Owen Brothers um, Modbus CT clamp meter, 100 amp meter, I've already used this for the Modbus RTU tutorial and you already know what the registers are and how to configure it. Now what we want to do is want to translate the Modbus RTU into Modbus TCP for basically the LAN that we have established. Why would you like to do that? Now it's very simple. Sometimes in some installations, obviously the Modbus considerations come at a much later point and there's no longer any opportunity for us to pull cables to that location. So for us to get a Modbus extension, for us to get some kind of a Modbus RTU to RTU communication is going to be very hard because it might be very expensive to dig cables or chase them around and so on. But there might already be a local network established, which means that there might be a switch, a LAN port or an access control point that we can connect to. And now we can speak directly to a mini server or any other POC for that matter on the local network. Now, what I have, if you look at my installation is we do have the Waveshare device connected to power 24 volts plus and minus but it can take different voltages DC um, th that is only on DC uh, next to it you have the RG45 port and then on the top of the device you have your Modbus communication the twisted wires are green for A and green white for B and then we have the ground as the single wire on the side and then you can see two ports that are currently not connected. That is the NC port, which if I short for, I think about three or five seconds, it's going to factory reset the device. So we don't need to have them connected in this occasion. Now, how do we actually connect it and how do we set up the device? How do we configure it? Now, the first thing that you're going to need to do is go to a web page. Um, now the device by default is going to go to one of two IP addresses. 192.168.1.254 or 1.200. Oh. However, I already know that this is not going to work because my local network is actually sitting on addresses 192.168.0. something. And because of it, basically I won't be able to see the device because what is happening on the local network whenever you have two different subnets. Basically, it's like having two different, well, having two people in two different streets. Basically, they can not see each other and they can't communicate that way. Exactly the same when it comes to network communication. So the first thing I would like to do is I can come to the Wi-Fi, go in here to the little information tab. And instead of an automatic IP, I can edit it and set it to a manual IP. I can use IPv4 for that matter. And I can do 192.168.1 something, and I'm going to just use address 50 because I know that is an available address on that part of the network. Subnet is pretty much always 255.255.255.0. Gateway, I'm still going to use the same gateway as on my normal network. However, I'm still not going to get internet, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the gateway is basically your router, your network switch is basically your connection to the outside world. And then my preferred DNS, again, it will be the same. And my alt alternating DNS is gonna be Cloudflare, but that can be Google, that can be anything else. Again, I'm not going to necessarily connect to the internet anyway, so that is not important. The most important bit is this, followed by this in here. If I press save, you'll be able to see that as soon as I do, I'm going to lose internet. So that is done. I'll close this, and there we go. We have no internet. And you can see I'm still connected to my local network. I'm still connected to Unify, but there's no uh, internet connection. Now I can try and go to the default address as per the manual of the device. And there we go. Immediately we go to the RS-485 to 
Ethernet uh, gateway. So now I can log in and by default, there's actually no password on this thing. So I can just press log in and it takes me there immediately. Now in here, there's quite a few things that we need to configure. Again, pretty much everything is network based, but let's have a quick look at what this is. Now, first thing first, device IP. This is the IP address of the device. As you can see, I'm currently connected to .1.254. This is where it's sitting at, but we want to move it to something on our part of the network. So I'm going to move it to 0 0.123, I think is available now. I'm going to change the device port to 502. This is where I'm going to be sending and receiving information from. The web port is basically this web page. I don't need to change it. I'll just leave it on 80. It is a TCP server. I can leave it as a TCP server. I'm not too fussed about it. And then the destination IP or uh, destination DNS, it is slightly confusing. I don't know why they've done it this way. Uh, I think this is just bad translation or bad explanation, or there's no explanation in here. But basically this is going to be the same as the devices. So it's going to be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. And then destination port, of course, is not the destination port of the device for whatever reason. So I'm going to just leave it as a default. The gateway is going to be the same as my actual gateway as uh, where the root is sitting on 0 0.1. And the IP, I'm going to leave to static. In some situations, I'll actually recommend otherwise. I would recommend this to be put on DHCP and then you can assign it as a DHCP reservation from the router. But again, that is not that important in this case. We can just leave it on static and forget about it for now. Now, the serial settings in here are the actual settings of your device. So if I go back to the device that I'm connected to, uh, the OB meter, I can see the default settings. For example, board rate is 9,600, parity is none, and I already know that the stop bits are two. So I can come here and obviously adjust my settings. Depending on the device that you have, obviously that is going to vary quite a lot. So do check with the manual to make sure you have the correct settings. Data bits are almost always eight. So I'm going to leave it as eight, no parity, two stop bits and flow control. We actually don't need for this device. For some other devices, again, check with the data sheet. You might need it. Now this, again, it's not necessary, but I do like it as an option which means that if there's no data, if there's no communication with the device for some time, you want to restart it automatically, I will leave it like this. So if there's no communication within 300 seconds, then it would try to reconnect a few times and it's going to reboot itself. Simple, but I think quite clever to have. Then protocols, Modbus TCP to RTU. Yes, uh, because we want to translate it in both ways. We want to translate our TCP to RTU and then RTU to TCP. So yes, absolutely. Enable multi-host. We don't need multiple hosts at the moment. We just need one, so that's fine. And then if you want to secure this web page, you can change the password in here. So I can put a new key, aka a new password. I'm not going to, because for the sake of this, I don't want to forget it. So I click Submit. I click the little restart in here. And once restarted, uh, if I open CMD, the command prompt, I can try and ping the same IP address, um, let's say 10 times. And you'll be able to see that that address is no longer reachable. There's nothing sitting on that address at the moment. Perfect. So now what I can finally do is I can go back to my Wi-Fi settings. I can click on I for more information and I can get myself back on DHCP, which means that I'm going to go automatically on the same network. And you see that instead of no internet, I'll be able to switch back to being connected, secure connection and all of that. Now I can close this. I'm back on my normal network. And you can see that the RS-485 to ethernet is already sitting on 192.168.0.123. So if I log in, in here, here's all my settings, everything's saved exactly as I wanted it to be. Cool. So what is next? I will go to config and let's actually do the integration. Now in this case, uh, this mini server is actually on the opposite side of the building. So it's perfect example. I actually can't get a cable to it. I am currently well renting this place. So uh, there's definitely no opportunity for me to get cable from one side to the other without making it ugly. And 
I think this way is going to be a little bit easier that I can just have a Modbus TCP connection instead. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to network periphery. We're going to add a Modbus server. And this is basically going to be our, well, RS485 to ethernet device. And now we click on the little cog in here. We're going to put the address uh, 02123. And now the port that we've set is 502 that we're going to be using. So we put 502 as well. Once this is set, I'm going to go and add the Modbus device. And now my Modbus device is actually going to be the OB115 CT clamp meter. And now exactly the same thing as we did in the RS485 video or the Modbus ITU video, we're going to connect the sensors. Now I already know the settings for them. So I'm going to quickly add two, three sensors and see if we get some information back. So I'm going to add analog input. I'm going to set it to address number two. I'm going to leave this to read holding registers. And as we figured out last time, it is a 32 bit floating point. So that's perfect. And this is basically my voltage. Then I have another one, add analog sensor. This is going to be my frequency, which was one, two, three, four. And it's again a floating point. There we go. And power, I think, was register eight, but I'm not 100% certain. Active power is register eight. So I'm going to also add register number eight. Change it again to floating point, read holding registers, drop them all on the page, save in the mini server, and let's see what we're reading, if we are reading anything. Now, straight away, there's nothing. Oh, oh, something was seen in here. So I can click on Modbus Monitor. And I can see that actually, it seems like some error is coming through not reachable not reachable let's test the voltage on its own oh something's coming back from sensor okay from this center sensor something's coming back why well, it's coming from here nothing on the frequency zero nothing in here and what was this? This was active power. Again, nothing necessarily coming on active power. So yellow is actually good. Yellow means that we do have communication. However, you can also troubleshoot with the um, wave share device itself because you can see whether or not communication is going both ways based on that communication indicator that you have on the right hand side. If it's just green, if it's flashing green, it means that there's communication one way. If it's flashing green and blue, it means that there's communication both ways. Now, on my device, I do have an assumption to make, and I think one thing is happening. Now, I am getting some information in here, but it's not quite the information that I'm looking for. And then no matter how many times I test it, I think we're still going to be greeted with roughly the same data. So most likely what is happening because this is a Modbus gateway, it is translating it, but it might be translating it with one address off because Modbus usually starts counting from zero instead of one. So what I'm going to do, just to test my theory, is we're going to move the voltage to address one. So instead of starting to count from uh, one, two, three, we're going to start from zero, one, two, three, which means we're offset by one point. And let's test voltage again. See if we're getting anything. 240, nice. Let's offset the other ones, offset by one point, offset by one point, save in the mini server. Do a little test to try and pull the information again. And there we are. Perfect. We have communication. Communication is going both ways. Everything's working on the local network and we're good to go. From here on, I can do exactly the same as we did in the Modbus RTU video. I can come and change 
everything so it looks a little bit prettier. And basically I can use all the addresses that I used in the previous video, however I'm going to offset them by one point. I'm going to see the same offsets and same everything else. And I'll be able to use it in config. So for example, at the moment I can see the active power that I'm pulling is 16 watts. So what we can do is we can do the same offsets, a thousand to one. So instead of watts, being able to see it in kilowatts. And this is going to be V.3 instead of V.1, so three decimal places. Save this into the mini server. And let's see how the information looks like. There we go, 0 0.015. And the other thing that I would like to do in this instance is I do want to test how quick can we make it? Can we see every well information every five seconds? Because now remember, all of that traffic is on your local network. So the last thing that you want to do is you want to kill your local network because of the Modbus TCP. So I'm going to pop a near in here. This is going to be um, energy meter extension. That is the extension that's connected to it at the moment with lights, my phone charger, and a few other things. Save it in. Right, that is coming through. Coming through. 16. Let's see in the app. I have created a new room called the testing. And there it is in real time. 16 watts being pulled. That is happening on the local network. And basically, I have no physical cabling between the mini server and uh, obviously my OB115 that is connected at the moment. You can connect multiple devices. You can do uh, basically the same like 32 slave that you normally do. And if you want to see more information, I have provided a link down in the description that you can use. Now, with that link, you can go and download a few other tools. If you need to troubleshoot, you can go through a few other steps. But I think this is a little bit easier because you just need your PC connection and nothing else. If everything is wired correctly, if uh, all your devices are flashing in the correct colors, then you're golden, you're good to go, and you should have communication in no time. Thank you very much for watching. Leave comments down below if you want to see something very specific or have any questions. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.